kill is kind of a clickbaity word here, I appreciate, but it, it is nuanced and I, I need to explain. So recently at Hamvention 2024, there were over a hundred of these little nodes, these mesh-tastic nodes, and if you've been following my channel for long enough, you've seen me do some deep dives on how to build them, how to set them up, how to use them. It's grown leaps and bounds on the videos I've made, and I've tried to keep up with some of the things they, they've done, even interviewing a couple of the developers. I'll post a link in the video description. It was a really good talk. But what we found was there was so many of these nodes meshing, right? Because what do these do, right? They occasionally transmit, hey, I'm here. Hey, I'm here. Let's be friends. And then they can send information, their packets, Packets is just a useful term I'm using here. It's probably not the right term, but they'll transmit their little pieces of information across this mesh that they build out every time a new one of these pops up. They either build these people in or they take nodes out as they stop responding or stop beaconing. Well, when you have that many nodes in one location, it gets to the point where the entire time or what we call link budget capability of how many beacons you could put into a second, a minute, or whatever, was almost entirely saturated by these little devices saying, I'm here, so am I. Hey, I'm over here too. Let's be friends. What it caused to happen was when we would try and send a message, the human beings actually trying to use the mesh network, we weren't able to get our transmissions out. We were getting messages that said maximum transmission reach or retransmission reach, which means the mesh device tried to send our message multiple times to get it out onto that time link budgety thing, and it wasn't able to do it. Now, this isn't a failure of Mesh-tastic. That's the first thing. This isn't a bug that we uncovered. This isn't a problem with Meshtastic. Let me get that right out of the way. There's nothing Meshtastic's doing wrong. And I actually reached out to the developers to confirm, hey, what do we do in the future to handle this? And of course, I want to be really clear. Meshtastic is used in much greater numbers at places like DEF CON, Coachella, The Burning Man, you know, th those big events, these huge events, and also in urban environments. So the tips I'm going to talk about today are going to be about mesh-tastic use in urban environments or a very dense mesh network. There are two fundamental tips that the developers recommended and there's a third that was recommended by the user community on how best to prevent this overloading saturation and not being able to use your messaging capability. The first is you must have MQTT turned off if you're going to be using just the standard channel system. If you've got a hundred nodes and they're all on the same channel, you got to have make sure that MQTT is turned off. What is MQTT? Well, it is basically where one of these guys will have a connection to the internet via Wi-Fi or you know whatever. And it will try to bring in other nodes from the internet that are also MQTT enabled, say in a, another part of the country or another part of the world, into the node dense node network that you are currently operating in. We had a couple of these at Hamvention and they worked great the first day. It was really cool. We were actually seeing nodes pop up in Texas and New York and all over the place where people had used my QR code, remember, that I made before Hamvention and they were able to join our network, which was fun. We were able to, you know, chat with people. That was the day before Hamvention kicked off. And at that time, it was pretty novel and fun. When Hamvention started on Friday, the MQTT stations being somewhat aided by the internet were getting pulled in and it was causing all kinds of slowdown because now we've got even more congestion and whatever the effect of trying to bounce all this stuff across the internet was causing through one little poor node or multiple nodes are like help help i can't handle all this have mqtt turned off that's the the first thing and if you you're like i don't even know what mqtt is it's fine it, it's actually not something that i'm not really i'm not really an advocate of that anyway with mesh tastic i prefer this mesh to just be mesh tastic and not use the internet in any way it's it's novel for those that need it, but mm, uh, just skip it. So the second thing, and this one is probably going to be the most important. When you spool up your first Mesh-tastic device, it's going to have a primary channel, channel zero. It's going to be long, fast. So I, I just did a, a, a big deep dive because I, I, I used the word uh, packet, and that's not correct. The, the term that Laura uses is called a chirp. 
and that is a uh, it, it's basically a pre-formulated message that's controlled by time and it's almost identical to satellite communication which i thought was really cool so it, it's broken up into sections there's a preamble bit there's a sync section or a sync symbol there's a payload and the payload could be like hey i'm josh's mess-tastic i'm right here and this is my telemetry information or my gps information and there's a crc and crc is just like a, a number value that if you took that whole message and did a algorithm against it those numbers should match got it it, it doesn't really matter if you got it or not but there's this spreading factor, right? So we've been talking short, medium, long, or long, fast, dot, 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 right? So the spreading factor is how long it takes for that chirp to go out. So if we are on long, fast, Meshtastic is basically saying, hello, I am Josh's Meshtastic. I can be found at this location. But if you're using short, it's more equivalent to like the Micro Machines guy back in the uh, the 80s and 90s. They're like, hello, I'm Josh's Meshtastic. I can be found right here. Here's my telemetry. It's, it, it reduces the time it takes to transmit the same amount of information. This is important because it allows you better use of what we call link budget or that time in which any one of these nodes could be transmitting, right? So if you are in a highly contested mesh network setup with lots of these different nodes, you, dear viewer, you might not want to use long fast. You might not want to stick to that default primary zero channel. In fact, the devs at Meshtastic told me we should play around with medium and fast. Make your channel, your primary channel, a, a short fast and then have a backup uh, redundant channel, channel one, channel two, etc. You can play around with it at that point. So yeah, that's that's kind of the tips here. We didn't necessarily break Meshtastic, but we definitely uh, bumped our head against the ceiling of that long spreading factor, which I just learned a lot about. And if you'd like to learn more about it, uh, a fantastic video that I found, link will be in the description, call, from Richard Varner. I, uh, I didn't... I didn't expect it would to line up right with what I do as far as an engineer, but boy, it got there real quick, and I was like, "Oh, you dummy!" <laughs> and so that was that was kind of fun. I find more interesting things about Meshtastic every time I, I play around with these, but yeah, that that was a uh, that was a cool one. Anyway, if you found this video helpful and and you live in an urban contested environment and you're like, "Oh my God, I don't know, these things don't work right," maybe play around with some of your channels, and you'll probably do a little bit better. Give that a shot. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. 73.